Well, Alan, Alan Johnson, it's very nice of you to agree to, to have a chat. This is one of a series of chats that the Honourable Company of Gloucestershire's Business Group is initiating with people in business and education around the county, just to get a feel for how has it been for you in this pandemic and, uh, and what, what, what are the outcomes for you? So, uh, Let's start with how has it been for Newand? Or tell us a bit about Newand first. Okay, I mean, the... Uh, well, um, Newand, Newand is a... Uh, we're a, a comprehensive school on the edge of Gloucestershire and or Gloucester City, sorry, and on the the edge of the Forest of Dean. And I, I don't think many people know we're we're here. And I sort of like it that way. Uh, the uh, it's a it's a it's a great school. It, it really is a fantastic school. It's a very it's got a very traditional uh, um, education. We offer a very traditional education, and by that I mean. Uh, you know, they are traditional high value GCSEs and A-levels, uh, but it is very much a broad curriculum offer. Uh, I simply refuse to narrow the curriculum because I, I think that young people get one chance of an education and it has to be uh, something that meets all their needs. So we value the creative opportunities as much as the academic, the sporting, as much as the technical. And again, I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, some of those would have presented real challenges then to you during during the pandemic. How, how, how have you have you had a good war? Of the is the the oh uh, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I mean, if 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 anyone was interested in writing a book, uh, you know, detailing a head teacher slowly descending into madness, uh, or mapping uh, a school operating and dealing with COVID, if you go onto our our website, you can actually see every letter I've written every week at the end of every week since you know the start of the pandemic right. uh, to try and uh, manage expectations, to manage emotions and to uh, navigate a path through ever-changing uh, guidance from on high. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, they, they the parents, uh, staff report to me that they actually uh, really appreciate that that regular communication, that constant communication. Uh, but yeah, I'd be yeah. lying to you if I say it wasn't a challenge. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I mean, well, with another organisation that's done something similar, and that that constant communication that's that's a bit of best practice that that really has come to the fore, hasn't it, during this? And mm. some of that will hang on, I'm sure, after the after the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, the tone of the communication. Uh, I've made a conscious decision to change the tone of any communication with home, uh, because I judge that at a time when there is so much angst and anxiety uh, in our communities, uh, for me to uh, give a very corporate response, uh, a very uh, cold response to uh, the very real challenges that people are facing uh, would be inappropriate. So you know, I've shared a lot yeah, I'm, I'm quite incredibly British. I, I mean, I, I, but I, I have gone out of my way to share a great deal of personal family information to try and convey to our communities that we're all in this together and we're yeah. all struggling and we'll all see the other end. Yeah. And how is that? I mean, you, you, you talked about home there. I mean, home's been a big feature of, of education, hasn't it, over the last few months? I mean, the, how, how have your pupils managed with, with homeschooling and IT connectivity and availability right. of, of equipment uh when when the uh the government took the decision to close our schools back in march uh, up until that point we we had maintained full year groups in schools we we weren't uh yeah we we didn't have to uh send year groups home uh and uh once uh the schools closed on the friday we opened up again on the Monday for you know vulnerable students and children of key workers, and in those early days, uh, it was reported that we had more children at our school than you know anywhere else in Gloucestershire. And uh, you know when I questioned that, uh, the the response came back, well they feel safe, they feel safe in school, yeah. and so we we maintain that education all the way through you know both holidays, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was tough, uh, but the the children came regularly, and uh, we were able to balance that with 
various iterations of distance learning to meet the needs of the diverse community we serve. But one of the things that was you know, heartbreaking to me and something that wasn't picked up at a national level, in my opinion, was that in Gloucestershire, there is a huge digital divide. Now, uh, you know, it's because I'm, I'm a, I, I serve a, a very comprehensive community, I had some young people who had no issues with access to technology in the home, mm -hmm. um, but also I had some families where the technology that did exist was used to support uh, your mother or father in their work. Yeah. And so you know, me just assuming that it would be used uh, for learning was you know, simply not the case. And we had other, other people where they didn't have access to internet, a quiet place to learn. They didn't have access to anything other than the mobile technology on their phone. And then I had you know, parents asking me, well, you know, am I expected to use all my data uh, for learning? Are you gonna pay for that? And it, it, so it was very real challenges because we serve uh, you know, a very diverse community. Uh, and and so when when I when I heard about other schools who were uh, yeah everything was seamless I, I'm quite jealous uh, at times because again we, we it's it's different opportunities uh, you know, some opportunities are not there for every young person yeah and it's difficult to know how to how to deal with that I guess I mean do, were you providing laptops or devices for for well the government gave us ten. <laughs> the you know the government scheme uh, they gave us ten, uh, uh, but again what we had to do was use pre-existing technologies to try and meet the needs of young people, but also uh, old-fashioned paper. We we had to you know deliver and send you know send paper exercises to young people, so we we changed that what we were offering, uh, you know many times in response to right. new developments. Uh, but also uh, it was difficult managing expectations because uh, there was a drive to, uh, you know, everyone looking over their shoulder. If, there would be, if there'd been a national, uh, all schools will do this or all schools will do that, that would have been easier. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you, uh, uh, as soon as uh, guidance is open to interpretation, then people look over their shoulders and think, well, actually, this school's doing that, that school's, yeah. and it, that makes it harder. And then there was the uh, uh, a perception early doors that uh, Zoom or Teams uh, or, or any other digital platform was the only way forward. And uh, I'm sure by now everyone will understand the limitations with uh these 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 platforms where they are not uh, a direct substitute for that face-to-face -face communication in the classroom they're very good at maintaining a a social contact but actually meaningful education uh i think there are better ways to do that through narrated powerpoints or through through a, a blended approach uh, and so that's something we've learned and we'll we'll take forward yeah, no, it's a, a blended a blended way. So there will be there will be some lessons learned from the use of Zoom and Teams and things like that. But but it's not it's not a replacement by any sort. And that's in a school. And I, the little I know about you and uh, Alan is that you you do focus very much on creating a skill base in your pupils around IT and, and artificial intelligence, don't you? I mean that's that's been a, a driver for you. Yes, I mean that that is, and that's something that. Uh, will only continue and has continued. I mean, one of the things, one of the lessons learned for me is that, uh, you know, and I'm being flippant here, life goes on. And so I simply refuse to let uh, the, the pandemic stop what we are offering and what we're doing for young people and for the community. Uh, so we have had the University of Gloucester working with us in school uh, with our young people in a socially distanced way, but trialing a new app to keep them safe in a digitally connected world. So that, that was important, that had to continue and other events have to continue because the children get one chance at an education. I think that's a key point, isn't it? And I think the you mentioned the links with, with follow on education, tertiary education for your students and the, 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 other, the other silver lining to, to those links that you're creating with the university is that students are introduced to the concept of further learning beyond beyond 16, 18 or, or wherever and other institutions can offer it. 
But I think you, you, you again, the, from what I know about you, and you, you have embraced the, uh, the Zoom age. I've, I've, I've had, had sight of your Night of Shakespeare, uh, <laughs> the, the drama group, which is, which is great. And uh, we'll, we'll let our members get, get access to. But I mean, that, that's, been a, that's been a learning curve for those students and for the staff involved, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, right from, from early doors, it was very clear to me that, uh, you know, children and families were suffering and that social, that social connection, that vital social connection that schools offer to families and communities, it was important that we maintain that. So right from day one, we were calling parents uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, not uh, just a welfare check, just we're still here and we know you're still there and we still care. So we were doing that all the way through. We had events, uh, art events, all the way through the holidays. We had spelling bees all the way through the holidays, make, keeping that connection going. And as you know, uh, you know we, uh, the drama at Newen, the art and drama at Newen is exceptional. We were planning to do Sister Act this year where we'd have 200 plus children from every year group involved in the play, do all our own sound, all our own lighting, the full orchestra. And COVID put paid to that. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to let uh, COVID stop uh, any performance happening. Uh, and so, and again, you know, when I heard that, you know, nothing can happen at the West End, well, I thought, well, actually, we've got to be able to do this some way. And so, yeah, the our drama part, department, our Marie, our head of drama, truly an exceptional teacher, she organised uh, a night of Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream. So our children performed a Midsummer Night's Dream during a pandemic and yeah fantastic yeah and no, it, that's that's the thing that really uh, warms my heart to see that we can do things doesn't matter what the challenge is and it, and it looked as if it was fun too it looked as like they were enjoying themselves too which is great yeah. alan it's been great talking to you thank you very much indeed i can see it and under your under your face it says new community school and, and community is very important there isn't it it is definitely well thank you very much no thank you it's, it's been a pleasure and uh, all the best and thanks to you and and your staff yeah, thank you. Thank you. We'll keep that in. All right.